audio issue. It's a good thing. Good thing I checked. Oh, did the audio just begin? Yeah. <laughs> well, in case you hadn't heard, we were we were moving to music just to start us off. Um, if, if you could move with the silence or whatever you're hearing, that was, that's awesome. Great. Lisa just said, I can't hear you. Thanks for commenting, Lisa. Can you test with us now? Can you hear us now? Are you able to hear us now, Lisa? Tuning into Lisa, can you hear us? <laughs> This is very important. <laughs> There's no for, sense in having a conversation if uh, we can't be heard. Hoping for some feedback from you because uh, we want you to hear us and we want to make sure that that's going to work out. Maddie, I see you in here. Maddie, can you hear us? Can you give us a little hands up or some kind of indication if you're able to hear us? Can I get a whoop whoop? Okay, well, I think, uh, Lisa, I'm not sure if you're able to check in with us either. Lisa, if you're able to let us know. Anyone? Ah, okay, great. We got the heads up. We are loud and clear. Thanks, Maddie, Beautiful. for, for uh, letting us know here. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So with that being said, now that we've dropped in, now that we've arrived, now that we're in our bodies, let's get to the meat and juice while we are here today. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you introduce yourself and I'll introduce myself. Perfect. <laughs> so my name is Tamina. For those of you who don't know me, I'm an embodiment guide. So essentially my path, my journey here, my way of serving the world here now today is about bringing you into your body and into your power. Because there are a lot of things that we can miss simply by speaking, simply by thinking and imagining, but there's an undeniable truth that lies in the body, that lies in our embodiment, how we walk into a room, how we express ourselves, maybe the things we're not willing to reveal. Sometimes we can find those things in our bodies and the way that we move them. So that's my specialty and that's my gift and that's what I love to share with others. And I've been doing this for 20 years. I've been a professional dancer for over 20 years. I've danced with Lady Gaga, So You Think You Can Dance, Justin Bieber, all of that. But my greatest gift has been discovering the element that I bring, that every human, every person can bring into how they walk this earth and into everything they do. There's an essence that we all carry and that's what I'm about. That's what I'm about. That's what I love to ignite in others and to remind others. So that's what I'm here for today. That's what I'm representing. That's the perspective I'm bringing. And um, also specifically with women, I like to bring them back to their feminine embodiment. So I'm gonna be representing the feminine voice for today's discussion, feminine energy. And um, Michael, would you like to share a bit about the perspective that you will be sharing today? Sure. I, I am also a mover, I'm also feeling into my body, but my practice is to bring, bring that experience and the wisdom from the body out into a relational environment, to share it with others in a way that everyone can understand and we're delivering the message that we're feeling inside, the true message. So it's an authentic expression through our language. Can we communicate with each other through our language? And can we get to our connection of what with each other, what, what we're really feeling with what we're saying. So I, I coach people um, to fulfill their life's journey uh, by using these techniques from an authentic relating perspective. I share my wisdom and I find their wisdom that's in their body, helping them to voice it in their own language. I also help, uh, I do relational coaching. So I create experiences for couples and pairs to be with each other and find that sense of shared reality that's that 
sense where they are both being true and they're both able to see and connect with each other from the truth instead of the stories. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, because really, how do we know when we're living from the story? How do we know when we're relating from truth? That's the journey, right? That's the journey, that's the practice. That's the practice. Mm -hmm. So let's get clear a bit about when we talk about male, female, and feminine energy and masculine energy. I'd like to kind of give some clarity on the way that we're gonna be using this language for today's discussion. So I think that's an important thing to distinguish. Absolutely. So as Tamina is a woman and she's going to be, just, obviously, she's going to be embodying in this discussion the feminine perspective, the feminine energy perspective. And uh, I'm going to be embodying the masculine perspective in this scenario. Um, although that can change depending on depending on the moment and depending on the needs of this of the situation. So why, what I want to stress right now is that man does not equal masculine energy and woman does not equal feminine energy. These are man and woman is, is a gender and masculine and feminine energies are something different from that. One thing to, I think, make clear here is that each person, each individual has both masculine and feminine energies and they embody each of them and they have their own balance. Everyone has their own particular balance in this respect. So just to speak more on that is that, yes, in our relationship, our practice is to have that agility, um, but quite naturally, I lean to the masculine side, like naturally. Mm -hmm. Like I embody a masculine energy to me, um, but it's my practice to soften into my feminine energy. And for Michael, it's been... It's the other way, actually. I, <laughs> I, I like to feel into my feminine energy. I like to flow with that expression in myself. It's my practice to better develop and embody my masculine energy. And this is a practice that I engage with, with Tamina. Which works, right? Because we are both supporting each other in developing the side of ourselves that we want to experience more of to feel that inner balance. So let's talk about more about what is feminine energy and what is masculine energy and what does that even look like, right? Because we're talking about it, but it's easy to be like, great, what is that? You know? So, so let's start with the masculine energy um why don't you embody it <laughs> <laughs> well firstly i want to talk about what that means really you okay. know what what does masculine energy look like because one of the things that i've noticed in my practice is that masculine energy on a feminine bodied person such as myself looks completely different than masculine practice on on a male you know it it, it, it mm. doesn't have the same um it's not experienced or delivered or witnessed in, or felt or any of those things embodied in the same way. Um, I found in the past when I would try to like, oh, what does masculine energy look like from like the mind space? It became a caricature like, oh yeah, I gotta be like that. And, and that is not my embodiment of masculinity. So when I like to think about my masculine energy, I like to think of like a penetrating forward energy. So usually I'll go with my eyes, like I'll, I'll be really directed, clear, clear energy forward, almost like a fierce energy that just penetrates through the space. I know where I'm going. Ain't nothing going to stop me. I'm on a mission. Usually it's like when I'm in my work mode, Michael can speak to that. <laughs> when I'm in my work mode, my focus is directed. I have my container. I'm in it and I'm moving forward. I would describe that like a train. <laughs> Tamina's work energy is like a freight train. It's a train. <laughs> Ain't nothing cutting through that. Ain't nothing cutting through that. And it feels good. It's like I hold it and I'm like, yes, I have all parts of myself and I'm ready to go. So that's what my masculine energy looks like going forward. If I embody it, it's a, it's a forward. Um, not that caricature. It ain't this, you know, it's not this. Like that is not the, fem the masculine energy that I would have, you know, thought of from a mind space. So that's what it looks like for me. 
Um, what is masculine energy like for you? Hmm. Well, I realize mine also is not a caricature of masculinity. I'm not trying to puff up my chest and be macho and show my muscles or something. Um, for me, masculine, my masculine energy it comes up like a, a holding of space. I feel like a container. I feel steadfast, um, sturdy, and present. I'm here, and I'm holding the moment. I'm experiencing the moment right now and letting it letting it in and letting myself be in it come out into it um that feels like that feels like the truest expression of masculinity for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nice yeah slightly different but there's definitely some common threads in there we both kind of talked about an energy moving forward mm-hmm yeah, like both of them are structured. They're one Tamina likes to direct forward and, and go go, and I like to hold a structure here and now. Mm. That's why I don't do schedules very well. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on now to the feminine energy, the feminine expression, and what that looks like for both of us, because again, it's going to be different. The way I will express my femininity will be different than ma than uh, than masculine, different than Michael embodying <laughs> his his femininity. So when I'm in my femininity, uh, it's like I feel like a river. I feel like a channel. I feel like there's a porosity in my body that I can take into me and express and allow to move through me, like like a river, like I'm permeable. Um, I'm feeling, I'm inspired by the things around me. I'm, I'm moved by it. So when I'm dancing, it's like I'm letting the sounds ripple through my body. I'm letting the music, the words like come into me and allow myself to be affected and moved by it. You know, when we're dancing, if I'm following his lead, I'm allowing my body to be like the expression of the note, the expression of the moment. Um, for me, that's how I express my femininity. That's when my feminine energy comes through. And in daily life, that can look like, <laughs> what does it even look like? That's, that's the whole thing about femininity. You can't, you can't really put, uh, you, can't really, you can't really peg it to any one thing because it's so dynamic and it's so, it's ever moving. And uh, to make it be one thing is just against the nature because the nature is no thing. That is the feminine, the feminine nature. It's not mm. one thing. Um, so that's what it's like for me. I like that. Yeah. I think for me, it, I think for femininity, I have to describe it as a feeling. Um, uh, so one feeling that came comes to mind is like a leaf in the wind, like a like twirling in the park winds. You know, it's going this way, that way, and it's just flowing around. Yeah, it's, it's go, it goes with the flow quite literally. Um, uh, another feeling I would, could describe as like a wave, like a pulsing wave. It's always in motion. Um, it's always in motion. Uh, it, it is dynamic, absolutely. Um, and it's formless. So it can take any, any shape, any form, any, it can look any way. It depends on the situation. I think it depends on, on also what's inside. Mm. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So that is how we express both of these energies. And uh, our intention in sharing this was to just really bring that awareness to you that we both embody both. I'm not just masculine or just feminine, neither is he. We both carry a balance within ourselves, uh, a place where we feel most comfortable, where we feel most alive, most uh, connected in the space between them both and using them in areas in our life that support what we're wanting to create. Because it really is a creative process. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm yeah. trying to work, am I gonna wanna be like receptive to everything? You know, maybe in my creative, like when I'm trying to get, but when I want to put that pen to that paper, I'm going to want to bring my masculine energy 
to materialize that idea. And, you know, same thing, like when I'm creating a process, you know, I'm not going to want to be penetrating forward because I don't have that, that gift, that idea, that inspiration to carry forward with me. That's important to have that. So I use my feminine to create and have that material to bring forward. Yeah. I think a big point here is that we can use these energies, these ways of being consciously, so we can choose to be in one of them, depending on what our, our goal is, what we want from the situation, which is why here we're choosing to embody the masculine in this conversation and the feminine in this conversation, because this is a practice that we want to create something between us, which this dynamic will, will serve. And, and that dynamic is polarity. Mm -hmm. We want to create a polarity between us in a certain way, um, which is, which is our practice and which is what we're going to talk about today. Think. Absolutely. So let's get to the meat of it. So we're here today to talk about expression. And it's a really important topic um, in our relationship. And what I've been seeing, you know, day to day is just like that experience of like, fear and being yourself, fear and letting your truth out, fear and like really saying those hard things, really standing in your truth. So today we're here to talk about why men love women in their full expression. And uh, this is a really healing thing. For me, it's been really healing to learn and know that, that men, my men, men out, out there as well, they want, they want to hear us. They want to know what's happening for us. They want to receive our truthful and authentic expression. So that's what we're gonna be talking about here today. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Absolutely. Um, we're gonna be talking about what a woman is like in her fullness, right? And that's that's that in her fullness. Um, I want to say something about about when a woman is in her fullness. That's when I want to be in my masculine. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a choice there to be in my masculine. So that's another reason I'm taking the masculine perspective in this conversation. Um, yeah, because I want to, yeah, I want to describe that today. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So what is a woman like when she's in her fullness? That's an important question. Let's start with that. What is a woman like when she's in her fullness? What does that look like? What does that feel like? Mm -hmm. Do you want to start from what perspective do you want to start with? What does it feel like for you or what does it feel like for me when you're in your fullness? Okay, I'll say what it feels like for me. <laughs> when I'm in my fullness, I feel like I have access to all parts of myself. I feel like there's not one thing that I'm willing to hold back. And that includes all my shadows, my insecurities, my fears. When I'm able to step into a place where I'm fully sharing and giving all of all of those things, not just my strengths and my qualities and the things that I want to be seen, but when I'm also able to embrace and share those other things that maybe we would say were ugly or bad, like when I'm able to show that full spectrum, that's when I feel like I'm in my fullness. That's when I feel like I'm harnessing all sides of myself and my power. Um, because when I'm only looking at one side, you know, the light, the happy, the joy, it's just like, oh, that's great, but there's this meat, there's this depth that's 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 missing uh, in this like realness, this character, not character like as in playing a character, but like character, like someone who has character because they've gone through things and they have like a texture and quality to them because of that experience, um, that's missing when I only look at the light. So um, when I'm in my fullness, I'm, I'm sharing all parts of me. That's what it's like for me. And that can be scary. <laughs> that can be scary. <laughs> but I feel alive in 
in that place. Even just being here with you guys now and sharing that, it's like there's an aliveness that's there because you can truly connect from that place because you, you're you actually being seen fully. Not the idea of me, not the perception, not the projection, but the reality, the authentic expression of who I am. And when you're, you know, when you connect with someone from that place, something really great and real and like fulfilling about that. Hmm. Absolutely. Uh, a word on, on the description of what I see, mm. what I see in that, in that fullness is, is comes down to the, the idea of dynamicism. A woman in her fullness, Tamina in her fullness, any woman in her fullness is extremely dynamic. It's like, I can't predict what's going to happen next. It's, it's, it's engaging. It's riveting. Like, it's like a, a movie that you can't, you have no idea what's about to happen, but it, it's, it's totally got you and you want to pay attention. It's fully dynamic. I, I imagine like I can see a woman in her fullness and I feel it, you know, I'm, my, my attention is attracted and that's what I want to pay, to give my attention to. That's where my, my space holding wants to go. I want to hold that in my attention. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's like a happy, super happy thing or it's a different, different type of emotion. Like a, it can be an intense, it can be sometimes it's very intense. It can be light. Um, but what I always experience is that it demands, it doesn't demand, but it, it attracts my attention. My attention is required to hold all of this energy that's happening uh, and I want to. That's really, that's a really important point there. He wants to, he wants to, he wants to hold it. How, like any ladies, anyone in here now, like how, how huge is that to hear that like, in, in that expression, not only of the light stuff, but the dark stuff, you know, the, but that fullness that the masculine wants to hold that, wants to be present for that, is in fact attracted to that. That's, that's really, really important because it's easy to, at least in my experience and what I've learned and seen and felt in myself is that like, you know, we, we, we tend to tell ourselves that, oh, they want to see that. They don't want to see that part. Like, in fact, if I show that he's going to run, but what he's saying here is the opposite. Mm -hmm. Showing that is actually attractive and it actually draws in, it draws in, it creates connection. Mm -hmm. And it can certainly have, um, I can certainly have a range of experiences in, in encountering a woman in her fullness because she she can she's going to express a full range of of expressions and emotions and my reaction to them is going to be different depending on on what it is and and its intensity and its direction and and you know who i am and what's going on inside me um, how i relate to such energies so her expression can have a huge range and so my experience can also have a huge range um, so that's definitely that's definitely there mm -hmm. um yeah so yeah that that brings to mind like it might be you know might be a scary place also for me mm -hmm. my um, my attention will definitely be required in a space that's scary for me but i might i might be scared but still need to hold on my attention here is that fear enough to create a desire for you to ask this woman to shut shut it down, shut down her fullness? Mm. It's it's possible. It's possible for yeah. If I if I can't if I don't want to handle it if I can't handle it if I don't know how mm. if I don't have 
a practice of being okay, being okay. I need to be okay in myself, really, if I'm going to experience something that could otherwise be threatening, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the key here that we're kind of skipping to is, is essentially that for the, the masculine, the person playing the masculine role, it takes having a deep centeredness in self, a practice of being able to hold that space. There's a question in, in how much space can that masculine energy hold? Mm -hmm. That's an important part. Um, a distinction actually um, is, is the man or the masculine energy can only hold as much fullness as, you know, he can only hold as much fullness as he can create space for. It's kind of like a man of uh, the masculine here is the enter is the anchor attached to a, a ship. And and if if the if the surface gets intense, if there's a lot of motion, then you know, an anchor only of a certain uh, massive uh, quality can can stay anchored and attached to the ship. Mm. Mm -hmm. so it's a relational it's a balancing it's a practice it's a practice Definitely. that 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 anchor being that anchor can require a lot of trust like i i would need to trust that i'm okay i need to trust myself or trust the i don't know i think i need to trust the woman i, I don't think that's as important i mean i need to trust myself i need to be able to trust that i'm going to be okay that you can ground yourself that you can anchor down and for a woman, I need to trust that he's got an anchor. <laughs> if I'm going to go flying in full blast, can he hold it down? Can he hold us down? Mm -hmm. I need to trust that. Um, so, so let's get back into it here. So what does a woman look like when she's not in her fullness? What does that look like? Um, let's start, let's start with you. What, what does that, or Wait, maybe I'll start with me then. You're asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> so say, what does that feel like next? Okay, so, okay, okay. So what does it look like for a woman to not be in her fullness? I experienced that as holding in, um, having an experience happen in my heart, in my mind, in my gut, and not being able to let that out, but really just like holding that inside um not trusting in myself not trusting in my voice in my story not trusting it enough to actually share it um there's just like a common theme of really just holding in of lack of trust in self or worthiness or um like fear of being seen fully there's really that there's that quality of definite like there's definitely fear and there's definitely a holding in and a hiding. Um, that's what it's like. Uh, that's how I experience not being in my fullest state of expression. Um, so from that place, I'm curious, what does that feel like for you as a man to experience a woman who's not in her fullness? Mm -hmm. uh, it it feels flat. It feels flat. Um, like there's, there's not much there for me. Um, I'm uninterested. Um, it's, it's, it's unmemorable. Mm. Yeah, there's, there's no draw to be in my masculine at all. Mm. from my perspective um yeah there's it's just there's nothing attraction there's no attraction really like there's no reason to be present there's yeah i don't i, I guess i guess i feel alone that's why i'm like i'm just alone here mm. and that's really that's really key point he's saying here because how often do we have that story, ladies, that like, he's not listening to me, he's not here, he 
doesn't hear me, he doesn't feel me, he's not showing up for me. Could it possibly be that, you know, not really showing our, our full expression to him, our heart's truth? Maybe that's why he's not being called to bring his masculine presence and his energy forward as, as a gift. You know, that's, that's a really great question to think about and to take in because, you know, sometimes it's easy to say, he's not showing up, he's not doing this. And like that blaming outward energy when it's like, there really does need to be this question. It calls for it of, you know, am I showing up in my fullness? Am I showing my heart's truth? Am I not just you know, talking about the story or the situation, but am I actually showing, you know, what I said earlier, the light and the dark, like the full experience of, of myself in this moment. And perhaps that might inspire the masculine energy to, to show up, to be that container and to be that anchor. Mm -hmm. To take interest. To take interest. <laughs> uh, yeah, to take interest. That's like really, <laughs> that's really a key thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Something, some definitely happening here. <laughs> well, okay. Well, then here's another question then, because if there's another angle to take about not being in the fullness, um, there's also an angle of closure, right? That's something different. Closing off, like completely closing off. Like, I wonder what, what that's like. For the masculine to experience the feminine closing off or even exiting the moment turning away from from the moment mm, like a disappearance like a disappearance or closure mm, there's like a no flow going on if there's closure right like there's there's nothing coming out mm. i think i could that can experience that in in a couple of different ways either either I'm like totally alone, like I'm just here by myself and there's not even another person here. So there's definitely no interest in that. Um, or if, if it's like been a full expression and then it's, then it's suddenly the doors have slammed shut, then that, that's painful. Like, cause I've been like basking in this, in this, full energy expression this like the, the space has been full and then all energy is just taken away it feels like it's just um the doors are shut i'm no longer welcome yeah it's it's a painful experience uh i can feel hurt in that um yeah so let's give like a tangible example of how that can happen like so say you know, you're in a loving, you're in a relationship, you're at the beginning and like everyone's happy and it's honeymoon phase and, you know, <laughs> you're on a date and it's fun. And then like, he does this like thing that you just like don't like. And, you know, instead of talking about it, you're just like, and I'm like, what? Nothing, what, nothing. What, what's no, wrong? No, 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 nothing, nothing, nothing. And, okay. <laughs> now I now I want to shrink. Like, okay, this this hurts too much to be present with this door shut in my face. Like maybe I just want to shrink and exit now. Does that bring more love? Does that bring us closer? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Even though like it feels like it might like, yeah, serves him right. I'm going to punish him. You know, yeah, that sucked. Then it's like, yeah, I got him good. But then it's like, oh, wait, there's no one here. I'm by myself. Like, am I actually winning? Am I actually? No, at least not in my opinion. Like, it's not winning. It's the ego really just playing, wanting to like get that like last word in, get that one up. But in the end, it's detrimental to the connection. It's difficult for the connection to continue because mm -hmm. there is no longer a flow. You know, it's there's closure. You know, in the moment where maybe that thing happened on the date, and if I was just like, you know, like that, oh, I really I was really hurt by that. Like that hurt. Mm. Yeah, I'm touched by that. Like I feel. I feel compassion and I'm like, and I feel also um, like a 
apologetic. Yeah. And I want to take care. I want to like give now. I want to give something. Mm. Mm. Much different. Yeah. That's very different. And I imagine like both of those, you know, those are two different actions and a way to achieve, you know, with a, with a similar goal. Like, um, I imagine what you're wanting there is, uh, is for the man to come out and, and do something, to give something. But the closure, um, is that right? Like in the closure, if you're wanting something? Yeah, I'm just like pissed. <laughs> I just <laughs> like didn't get what I wanted. And feeling like if I do that closure, it's gonna come. <laughs> you know, that's the, that's the thought process. Mm. But yeah, it's actually discouraging for me to, to come. I mean, I might be able to do it if I'm like really secure. I might be able to still do it, but it's gonna be more difficult. I'm gonna have to like, uh, like pull something out of myself. <laughs> to do that to do it <laughs> absolutely yeah so that's like a live demonstration for you guys of how <laughs> like actually showing your expression can actually lead to deeper connection and also growth because one you're having to lean into the part that you just don't wanna like we always have those things like i don't want to show that i'm vulnerable i want to look weak i don't want to give in but like it is the practice to stay open in those challenging moments. You know, your heart only opens more, it only grows. You only have more capacity to hold more, to love more, you know, to give more, not only to the connection, but to yourself. It's like that capacity is universal. So when you lean into those spaces of challenges, you're like flexing and releasing this like muscle and it just like can get bigger and bigger and bigger and you just grow, you know, as a person. And would you say you get, you actually get more of what you want when you're being that, you know, open in that fullness, in that moment of, of maybe hurt or anger? You definitely do get more of what you want in the end, because you're, you're drawing into you. You know, that's, that's, that's the feminine allure. That's the magnetism. That's our natural magic of the feminine energies. It draws in to you. It draws in what you need. You know, as long as you are, are willing to drop into yourself, you know, because when you drop into yourself, it's like your energy goes down and there creates space for more to come into you, to follow suit. But if you're not willing to come into yourself or to meet yourself, nothing else can come in. There's just, there's just no space. You know, you're full or you're, you're busy sending your energy outwards. And then that, that doesn't really leave space for the masculine energy to penetrate and to come in and, and for that creative circle to, to continue, mm -hmm. to continue moving. Yeah. I actually want you to be in that, in that continuous circle, in that, in that flow, in that expression. I actually want that because I'm realizing that I actually want to give. I actually want to be there in my, in my full, full presence and attention. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I don't want to be discouraged from, from doing that. So why, why does a man want a woman in her fullest, <laughs> juiciest, unleashed, raw expression? <laughs> why? Why? Why do you want it? Why else? <laughs> I mean, I want, I want it because, firstly, it feels good, like, especially when it's, when it's something that's, you know, alive for me too and it's something I, I, I like feeling you know, I feel it when you're feeling it when you're expressing it mm. you know I can feel what you're expressing and that you know that's fulfilling for me that fills me up it feels good yeah yeah I'm gonna hold this this is this is great mm. <sighs> so I'm um, hearing it's a gift absolutely yeah it's a gift it, I mean, it's, it's always a gift, actually. Like, it doesn't have to be the something that, oh, this, this feels so good, shower me with it. Um, it's also a gift when, you know, I'm realizing this doesn't feel good. Mm. Holy moly, like, what's your, what's your react, or, yeah, what you're reacting with, what you're feeling 
what your truth is in this moment, that doesn't feel good. And I want to know why I, I don't, I don't want to be, you know, co-creating the situation that doesn't feel good for her because then it doesn't feel good for me either. Mm. So it's giving me feedback. You know, it's, it's live feedback. What is the truth right now? What's happening right now? Mm. So just to clarify, like, it sounds like it's something like when her expression is showing her distaste or just not enjoying, it sparks a, a process of you now looking at yourself in the role that you're playing or could have played in creating that? Mm. I think um, it starts it starts actually in like, I'm curious now, like, why is this happening? What's happening for you? Like, what I, what specifically is ha are you reacting to? That's what I want to find out. And and why are you reacting to that? Or or why why is this thing happening? So if it's from if it's something I'm doing, you know, it's live feedback for me. So I can I can course correct. You know, and if I'm doing something that I don't actually want to be doing, you know, I am not realizing that she, you know. I'm acting a certain way, that I'm bringing a certain energy out. You know, and she actually is sensing it and she is feeling it. So that's what she's expressing, you know, that she's, that's the, the energy in the room because that's what I'm giving out. And then, okay, it's, it's being reflected back at me through her expression. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay. I was, I was being unconscious there. You know, I was, I was in a pattern there. Uh, I was doing something that, you know, was out of integrity maybe, or just, out of the character that I want to be in and and I can tell that I'm that I'm not in a character I want to be in because her reaction to it isn't good you know if she has a, a positive reaction then I and I trust her then I can trust that I'm I'm being the character like a strong character that I want to be mm. so our feedback is important our expression essentially is feedback it's genuine and honest feedback for the masculine presence to see like mm -hmm. how is he showing up so if we don't provide that honest feedback with our expression he doesn't know that how his presence is being received he doesn't know if he's being a doofus <laughs> he doesn't know if he's being the best man ever if he's like you know being superman and we love it like if he's really you know being attentive and listening if we don't give that feedback of how his presence is being felt, he doesn't know. Mm. So our expression is so important and that's why it's a gift. It's absolutely true. You, you just uh, inspired a, a, an image in my, in my mind of, um, <clears throat> of those biofeedback devices, you know, like the meditation devices that you like, you can put them on your head. Never experienced that, no. You never heard of them? Okay, yeah, there's these devices that you put on your head and they read your brain waves. So you can use them as, they call it biofeedback. So it gives you live feedback with an, like uh, earphones and you can hear what your brain is doing. So if you're very focused and it's like beautiful chirping birds, lovely jungle, and then your mind strays and you're, and you're off course and then you get like thunderstorms, raining sounds. So it gives you immediate feedback about what you're, brain is doing so in the same way you're like you can be a live feedback for how I am being mm. that's really important to make that that connection between how important it is to have the feedback mm -hmm. the live feedback so let's talk about then what about when you show him or you know the masculine your full expression and he runs away what about that what about when you show like that side of yourself that was really hard to find and to like you know it took some deep diving deep and then you like like you know what i'm gonna be vulnerable i'm gonna show up i'm gonna show you this really hard truth and you do that and then he says you're crazy and then runs away <laughs> <laughs> why does that happen <laughs> why is that happening yeah for the masculine Mm, uh, so it could be a lot of different things, but um, he could be just not ready. Like he, he's not ready in that moment. Maybe he usually is, 
he usually is um, able to hold that. But in this time, moment, you know, he's uh, depleted somehow. He's not in his fullness either. So he just can't handle it. Um, that, you know, it could be triggering for him. You know, so, um, he's, he, it could be a, a threat to him. You know, it's a trigger. Um, he's, a, he's afraid or he's feeling shame or guilt or, you know, like there's a story that this means I'm not playing up to who I'm supposed to be. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not acceptable right now. And, and that's, that's a shameful thing. And so in that, yeah, so, so that would mean that if I believe that, then I'm believing right now that she doesn't love me. There's no love. You know, I'm unlovable because of what she's t- saying to me. Mm. So that, I think that would be the core of it. Like any reaction that I have that doesn't want me to, he- I don't want to hear this is because I'm, my, my core is being threatened. I'm, I'm perceiving a threat. Mm. Yeah. The threat. Mm-hmm. So what I'm hearing in that, for any women that are curious, is that there's no blame on your expression. It's really his experience of inadequacy or depletion or inability. Mm-hmm. It's, it's something he's actually probably judging himself about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I'm judging myself, then you know that's that also doesn't feel good so if i if he's saying like no you're wrong you're crazy that's like i need to in my mind if i'm going to believe that i'm i'm still good one way to do that is to completely devalue what you're what you're expressing blame me yeah in my expression so that's the wrong thing i'm not the wrong unlovable unacceptable creature it's this thing that's just that that expression is false. That's just garbage. I'm okay. And that, that means I'm okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really an important thing to mm-hmm. key in on because, I mean, we all blame ourselves for a lot of things. Um, but in particular, this, ex- this thing, you know, in regards to like expressing the truth, like quite often we blame ourselves like once we do it we're like oh I'm too much I shouldn't have shared that I shouldn't have been that Mm -hmm. truthful because it's bad it's impolite it's too much but in reality it's usually the person receiving it who's actually experiencing um, some kind of struggle or conflict within themselves that they are now blaming Mm -hmm. on the person who's sharing that truth with them yeah like, I won't accept what you're saying if, if accepting it means that I'm bad, essentially. So I need to believe that I'm good yeah, to keep my, um, my self-efficacy. So let's talk about what kind of man can, or masculine mm-hmm. energy can handle the storm. Like, who is he and, 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 and what does he value? Uh, he values a full woman. He knows how beautiful it is, or a full feminine expression. Whenever it happens, he knows how beautiful that is and how good that feels. Um, the masculine, in this context, values values their their growth, their betterment. Um, uh, he is not um, plagued, he's not plagued by his um, low self-esteem, right? Uh, like shame and guilt are not such a threat, you know, it's not such a threatening experience to his okayness. Um, yeah, like he, I think, I think, the, yeah, I think there's value in growth I need to want to be better, value in being in integrity and and value in beauty and value in connection because that's, you know, I think that's where the true connection lies is when there's full, full fullness, full expression and full presence. 
that's like magic that we really can really touch. Mm. Otherwise, it's always like this, like trying to get touch with this bubble, and like we're not quite meeting. Mm. So I think valuing that connection is also is also a big one. So, ladies, you hearing that? Are you hearing this? There is. There is such thing as a man who is ready for this type of expression, for your full expression. And there are some men that just aren't ready and that's okay. It's really just a choice about what he's choosing to value or what he's choosing to step into in this point of the, in that point of his life. I think there's, um, there's definitely area in between here. So like, instead of there being like, this man's ready, this man's not for full expression. Um, I think they will both agree that like, you know, an expression that makes them feel good is, is desirable, right? The one, the one that's like wants to be, you know, um, wants to be in presence with the full expression, the man that wants to experience someone who can be in their fullness and full expression that's a step that's definitely like he's not he, that's not a i'm not ready and i don't want it that's i want it and and i need to grow to get there i want to grow to get there and maybe that that person needs some help mm. he needs some practice and some help would also be useful well, I'm a strong believer in choice. And uh, I think that there's something internally that happens that materializes in people's decisions and choices and readiness if they're wanting to choose the path of, of, of growth and transformation or if they're choosing the path of turning away and not rising to the challenge. So yeah, there is there is that space between the person who actually takes the step and turns away, but there's something within them. You can feel if there's that fire and that willingness, and that and that fight and that uh, that that courage to show up. Like you can feel that. I feel that as a woman. I can tell if if a man is is or the masculine presence is one that is willing to step step forward whether or not he can fully yet but if he has that that drive within him to do so that desire you can you can feel it i i feel it okay well i mean yeah desire doesn't always mean ability though you know and someone who's just starting out who wants to get there wants to have that He's not going to look like someone who's who's ready to jump in. And that's not what I said. Yeah. <laughs> Just to clarify, I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm like, you're hearing something different. Um, what I'm saying is that you can, I, as a feminine being, intuitive, instin instinctual, I can feel when that is there, that desire. It doesn't necessarily manifest as actually taking that step, but you can tell when someone is on the course, is in practice of leaning into that. Okay. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, you feel the difference? Yeah. Okay. See. <laughs> um, so it's not a you're ready and you're not ready. Yeah. So you're, you're not ready, so you're you're waste. Yeah, no, it's not it's not so it's not so black and white, cut and dry. There is like, but you know, when you're tapped into your feminine, you can feel that's another part of the feminine energy is like there's an intuitive voice within you like you can listen to that you can feel like mm, like what is my womb saying what is my gut saying you know what what's the truth in there um yeah it's worth listening to that listening to your spidey senses so the next question then is what would be useful for a woman to know in communicating her fullness or her full expression uh, in a way that would call a man to rise instead of shutting down? What are some tips that you can share and how to communicate, share our expression? Mm -hmm. 
to like what would help a, a man or someone who wants to be in their masculine, what would help them to rise and be present with the expression. Yeah, so if, if the reason that I'm not going to be present is my own judgments, fears of being not lovable and not okay, uh, a threat, basically a threat to me. Um, I think there's some some really good ways you can disarm that defense, you know, basically prime the situation so that the defenses, you know, don't need to come up when it, when it the situation happens. Um, so maybe like a, just a, a preamble before, like a one liner, like, I'm not blaming you, or this isn't, this isn't your fault, or mm. um, I love you. Uh, I love you right now. Um, there's something I need to get off my chest. You know, there's something I want to express. I want to give, I want to give my expression to you. I'm scared, but I want to give this to you. And I, I'm scared that you're going to react. You know, something like that. Mm. Those are really good tips that can really disarm a situation. Mm -hmm. Just giving that 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 preamble, like, like for instance, you're not wrong. You're not doing anything wrong, um, and then share yeah. my experience. Mm -hmm. Or you know, I love you, I love you, but I'm just <laughs> I'm not feeling this right now. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, and and is that better? That's okay. Better. <laughs> Okay, that's a good distinction. I'm glad we did this up because I would have fully used it. I would have been like, I love you, but no, okay. So but I, don't. I love okay. I love you and I'm feeling really annoyed right now. Like I'm not feeling XYZ. Mm -hmm. Is that how you would use it? Yeah, sure. I think also a really powerful one is to say, um, is to share that what I'm about to express is is really vulnerable for me right now now oh i am i'm totally disarmed this this person is being vulnerable they're they're in a in a precarious position and i want to i feel compassion right away right now i feel compassion so whatever comes up you know i'm i'm you know giving my attention onto holding this mm. because i don't i'm feeling good right now you're vulnerable okay oh okay what's this vulnerability mm. It's, uh, that's a gift as well to to be vulnerable with someone mm. when I, when someone's being vulnerable with me I feel it's a gift so if I know that's what's happening right now then yeah I'm, I'm much more open mm. that's a really good really good those are really great tips to utilize mm. uh, I just want to take a quick pause and check in does anyone have any questions or anything they want clarity on or just anything that uh, is coming up and then we just check um, here okay it looks, seems like we're all, check. yeah it seems like we're all great okay um, so um, our next hey 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 <laughs> <laughs> our, uh, our next the next question I want to just bring up here is or something we want to talk about next is um... so if if you have the tools to express and you have the fullness to express and you might s still not right so what what are you going to need so that you can be in your full expression what do you need to be in your fullness in your full expression with me Mm. it's really important I think for the feminine to feel that trust to feel the trust in the presence of the masculine the person that she is trusting and trusting and revealing herself to there's a necessity to trust that he can hold it that he can handle it that he can stand in it and, and this is not about putting on armor our false, you know, whatever the word we want to say, you know, that bravado or any of the things that that's, 
that suggest that you're putting on a facade, you know, it doesn't mean you have to be a rock, you know, you're going to feel and you're going to experience the expression, you're going to be moved by it. But there's a sense of believing that you can stand rooted in it. That even throughout the things that are flying and flowing and flinging, that you're not going anywhere, that you'll stay, that, that, that you're committed and, 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 and ready to rise together, to look at this, to look at this zone, to look at the situation, whatever it is, and be like, all right, you know, what are we working with? Let's look at it. Let's go in. Let's go in to go up, you know? So you would need to trust that I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay here once you've expressed and feel it. That you're going to stay and that you're going to do the work. <laughs> you know of like empowering yourself to be able to stay um and, and that and so so that you can create a, a space a container that's safe for us as a unit to be in so that i can bring my gifts and my expression into this home there's a place that's safe for it to be mm. so you need to feel safe to be in your expression so what what is going to make the space feel safe for that mm -hmm. if you don't have it now what what's going to make that space safer there is a sense of i mean i mentioned it many times like that ability when you feel in someone that they're willing, that they're willing to step into whatever they need to, to support the moment and support themselves. Um, there's like a, there's a heart. Like, I don't want to use a cliche, like a warrior's heart, but it is like that it's like someone who's willing to step into the to the flame but someone who's willing to actually be there and to feel that presence that like truthful presence like again not a rock but like an actual moving breathing human that even despite the emotional experience really actually uses the emotional experience to empower to empower himself to be able to step up into into the line of fire or wh whatever battle is ahead it's so something really about that. The question comes up about love right now. Um, is just feeling loved in that moment like make it safe for expression, or or is there going to or can it happen without that? It's a difficult one to answer because there could be love coming from from you but in this in the whirlwind of expression not going to really be able to recognize it like yeah it's hard to recognize it <laughs> when you're in like the the like spur of emotion or the whatever it is you're expressing like it takes it actually takes coming out of that expression to look and be like wait Am I loved? <laughs> like it takes coming out of that to like really look around and be like, is there love here? So it feels like it's, mm. it doesn't feel part of the experience of when I'm in my full emotion. Okay. But it's great to be there. And it, it's definitely, I think love is the driving factor for that desire in the masculine to even be there in the first place. Like, you standing there and being there with your physical body is the expression of love. That's absolutely true. Yeah, I feel that. Um, yeah, I'll be expressing my love both to myself and to you if it's a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. If it's challenging for me, then the most loving thing I can do is show up for myself, which is also in turn showing up for this moment and showing up for you. Mm -hmm. 
And if it's challenging for you, the most loving thing I can do is show up for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <sighs> so mm -hmm. that was that was quite the exploration, quite the chat here about um, why men love women in their fullness. And um, at this point, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to start closing and wrapping, wrapping up this discussion, but yeah. we want to open the floor to you again. If you have any questions that you guys have that uh, you might want clarity on or things you've heard today, or maybe something that's been sparked in hearing this conversation, yeah. um, we invite you to share now or in the future, if you're listening to the playback, feel free to leave a comment and we can we can either answer it there or maybe we might make another video about it. Yeah, if there if there are some questions, which I totally welcome, um, questions of any sort, yeah, we might just discuss them again openly online and share that share it with you that way. So please share any any comments or questions you have. Um, I'd love to, and we would both love to clear any clear any of those questions up. And to offer that to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So while we're any just... questions there now? Nope, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in that space, maybe we'll just kind of end with a... Do a soft close there. A soft close. Like a, mm -hmm. I kind of want to give a little demonstration here of like polarity, like when, when you know, I'm fully surrendering into my feminine and when he's fully showing up in his masculine and what that, what that might look like. Even okay. in just like a mm -hmm. seated movement, because again, using our bodies is one of the best ways to, to mm -hmm. drop into that, that flow. Like, okay, like, am I feeling his presence? You know, and then he'll, I'll be able to feel like, am I receiving him? Yeah. You know? I think, yeah, this movement practice for us is a place of discovery. So when we do it, we're stepping into a polarized space. And then that's when, okay, truth is coming up. We can see <laughs> what's alive, really, without any, any barriers in the mind in the way. Beautiful. So we're just going to do just like a moment here of just using our bodies to to embody the different polarities and, and see what you notice because we're going to notice things as we go along because you can feel it. You can feel when it's like, oh man, I don't really want to go with the flow. Like, oh, I want to take over. <laughs> I want to lead. You can just, you can just feel it. So shall we take a gander here and see what comes out naturally in this moment? <laughs> this is a practice mm. it takes a moment to want to go with it guys it's real <laughs> so <laughs> make your own commentary about yeah. what you think you saw and experienced because there was so much that happened like beyond words can even convey in those moments but that's the beauty about movement is because it unearths things that sometimes you wouldn't be able to experience with through language alone 
um, Absolutely. yeah, which, which really leads us into, into if you really want to experience the magic in this work in the beauty of embodiment and discovering all the things beneath the words and all the things that are inside you, if you really want to drop into your essence and, and, and learn how to bring your truth out through your body, I offer many programs in many different ways that you can experience this for yourself. This is for women. So if you are a woman, a woman looking to dive deeper into this work, into exploring your feminine essence, and then bringing that to your partnerships, to your workplace, to all of your relationships, because when you are in touch with yourself in this way, you might find all the things that you are desiring in your external life, they end up coming into you just like how we experienced and and spoke about earlier of being in your full expression there's a call to rise that happens you know things around you are rising and they want to come to you to support you your life can feel this way as well so if you want to dive deeper into this work i have a couple programs coming up starting in september online and in person so drop a line in the comments or we're going to be posting a link somewhere uh in this description description here for you to get in touch mm -hmm. and um and also michael yeah if uh if you are in a partnership or in a couple then and you would like to experience situations that are designed to feel the connection that can happen in true expression and you want to engage in the practice of continuous bringing our our, our truth out with our our language and communicating that in our relationship with each other. Um, I, I offer relational, relational connecting experiences. Um, I, also, I also am coaching one-on-one -on -one with people, uh, coaching to find their truth in their language and bring it into their language and, and discovering what's true there and what direction their direction is and discovering what's next for them, discovering their inner wisdom through our language as well. So it's another relational language exploration style. Um, we've also both recently uh, this week sent out newsletters for this week. Um, if anyone's interested in receiving either my newsletter or Tamina's newsletter, um, you'll need to give us your email. So uh, you can either comment it on this video, uh, send me a personal message, Tamina a personal message. Um, uh, you can find me on my on Facebook. My name's here. Uh, my business page, Tamina's page. Okay, all the pages and all, all the, the things. Pages. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> you guys know where to reach us. It's all going to be in the comments or in the description. So feel free to reach out if it calls to you. And honestly, I really enjoyed. I'm sure Michael did too. Hopefully, <laughs> um, sharing this with you guys. And if you want more of it, just let us know shoot us a message in the comments. Uh, I think I think I really want to continue doing this series, bringing different people here, whether it's Michael, different experts into our group to really give us more insight and, and, and to experience more of ourselves and to bring out more of who we are into the world that we are actually co-creating. You know, we are, you, you play a role in creating your reality and everything you do and every, every moment you make. So uh, let's keep making great decisions and choices by simply tapping deeper into ourselves. So uh, I want to thank Michael for joining today in this exploration, you, in this conversation. It was so nice to kick off with you <laughs> to, to bring this out. And um, yeah. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure to share. <laughs> And thank you guys for tuning in and happy Lionsgate. May tonight mark an opportunity for you to shed the old and welcome whatever it is you're wanting to activate in your life. Whatever heart, purpose, passion, desire that lives within you, may it come to fruition today and forevermore. Much love to you.